Gentlemen, it's me, Jim Kincaid. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be updating my review of the GBD H2000, a watch that you've heard me talk a lot about here on YouTube. And as a lot of you know, I, I attempted to use this watch without Bluetooth. And that was successful. This is a watch you can use without Bluetooth. And the whole time people were nagging me and they're like, oh, you gotta use Bluetooth. You gotta, you gotta use the Bluetooth. Just try the Bluetooth. Turn on the Bluetooth, come on. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to. And, and a lot of people just could not understand like why I was doing that and they couldn't understand how I didn't like Bluetooth. A few people caught on, a few people are on the same wavelength of me and one gentleman even said that, that his wife was, was like scalded, her skin was scalded by a, one of those strap heart rate monitors. So I do feel like using an item without Bluetooth is a worthy cause because I actually a long time ago was looking at getting a Garmin Instinct and I was curious as to whether that watch was functional without Bluetooth. I never actually got it because soon after contemplating that project, the GBDH2000 came out. And as a G-Shock aficionado, I was really disappointed with G-Shock, you know, Casio being like fixated on adding Bluetooth to everything. I think a lot of it has to do with making watches for the Brazilian and Indian market because they don't have multi-band six there. But here in the United States, you know, we have, we have multi-band six. They should at least add multi-band six on top of Bluetooth, which unfortunately they, they don't. This watch does not have multi-band six, but it does have GPS. So the GPS on this watch allows time sync. So it was attractive to me and I wanted to see, can you use it without Bluetooth? And yes, you can. Now, all those people complaining that I should, I should, you know, they're nagging me, they're telling me to get the Bluetooth on. Uh, those same, same people, it's like a whole bunch of people that would come into my comments complaining about how the app doesn't work, how they're having problems with the app, the app crashing, the app being subpar. And I'm just like, yeah, I told you so. Apps are stupid. Apps are stupid for everything, right? I, I, it just, apps are dumb, okay? And I'll make a whole separate rant video about how apps are dumb, but essentially, like if, if you, like say Chili's. Chili's, you can't phone in an order anymore over the telephone. You have to use the app. But all right, they don't want to use a telephone. What's wrong with a website? Websites always work better than apps. Anyways, I tried this watch without, with, with the Bluetooth, I turned the Bluetooth on, and the straw that broke the camel's back was a gentleman named Prince. He just asked a simple question about the sleep tracking. He's like, how's the sleep tracking? And I was like, well, I mean, the sleep tracking doesn't really work for me that well because uh, you know, I'm not using the Bluetooth or anything. And I was like, you know what, whatever, I'll, I'll turn it on, I'll try it. Because what happened was G-Shock released the Mudman GW9500. So this is my stuff hit the, hits the fan watch, the watch where you know you absolutely do not want Bluetooth because you do not want to be tracked by UN forces, right? With all their drones and everything. So this one uh, is a standalone watch, very rugged. This is my work watch because I work in oil field. This thing's like indestructible. I actually like this one. I will be updating my review of this one because I like the Mudman even more than when I first tried it on. It's, it's really grown on me. It's broken in some and a lot more comfortable. But I was raving about the physical design of the GBDH2000 in my first review video and I want to reiterate that. This is a very comfortable watch. The strap is, is pliable, excellent sweat management. Like see the ridges on the strap. This allows the sweat to, uh, to move out to where it can evaporate, okay? And the, the strap splays out all the way, okay? So that can, is accommodating to a big wrister and someone who wants to push his watch up on his arm while he lifts weights, okay? Those of you guys who wear watches to the gym know that when you have a watch that's too tight or too high up or low on your wrist, when you're going to lift weights, it gets in the way, okay? But the band on this one being very long allows it to, to get pushed up on your, on your, practically onto your forearm, you know, far up your wrist. So it never gets in the way while you're working out. 
and it looks big, and it is big. It's three quarters of an inch big. You know how we measure the thickness of watches around here. We put wrenches on them, open-ended wrenches. So I got a three quarters inch wrench on here, but it is so light because, it, you know, a lot of it's plastic, okay? But it's, it's the fit, I find it to be fantastic. And I love this chamfer and smoothing over of the edges on the bottom. Really good for sweat management. And you never feel like the heart rate monitor is, is being jammed into your flesh like it does on the Square Heart, the uh, DWH5600. Let me pull it out of this G-Shock bag, which was added to my order. I did not intend to order it, but I have it now and I am using it. So the DWH5600, like see how, how proud the heart rate monitor stands off the bottom of the watch that is really annoying okay to me some other people don't have as much of a problem but uh this this should be an award-winning watch based on on the comfort level in the fit and see how the wings are integrated into the band that's great and so th there's there's part of the of the wing structure like a little ramp built into the bottom of the watch body all right, so this is engineered very well. It's like a fantastic fitness watch, okay? And I could go on and on. I've made several videos extolling the virtues of the physical design of this watch in terms of being comfortable and functional as a fitness watch. And the drawback is that I work in the oil field. And so, uh, you know, there's, I'm not worried about like the impact. It's pretty durable. Uh, Maybe not as much as, as some other G-Shocks. Like, I don't think the band is 100% is strong as a range man. Definitely not the mud man. Like, this, this thing is, is uh, I, like, I have no reservations in terms of impact. This one, it's, it's on my mind. You know, oh, I don't want to hit my watch. And it's so thick that when I'm repairing equipment, it's hard to, to, to get my hand into places where I need to fix something. Like, you know, say I'm, I'm greasing the, the Zerks on, on, the, on the brake chambers, right? It, this is in the way. It's too big. So there's some problems with it. And I don't want to get, like, some, some abrasive gunk on the optical sensors. But as a fitness watch, it's terrific. So this is the watch I wear on my days off or when I go to the gym. And this is the watch that I wear to work, okay? So hopefully the apocalypse starts when I'm at work or going to work and I'm wearing this watch. Because if the apocalypse starts while I'm at the gym, then I might be stuck wearing this watch through the apocalypse. The apocalypse might be starting right now. You know, I mean, the way that uh, the turmoil is going on around the world, you know, it's like book of revelations, right? Anyways, uh, so... Three big problems that I have with this watch. There are still three big problems, and one of them is, is infuriating. And, and it also do with the software. I, like, the only problem fi like, that I have with the, with the physical part of this watch, like I said, is it's not mud resistant. And also, like, there's, let me get my pointer pen, which is the Zebra. Today I'm going to be using the X, or no, the F701 as my pointer pen. Link below if you're interested. But you look right here is that there is a, like, see how there's a gunk in there? Like, that, that might just be soapy water. But, uh, in fact, I think it is. There's a lot of hard water around here. And, and I, wash, I have to wash my watches, like, every day. So I just wear them into the shower and then wash them and then take them off whilst in the shower. But you can see all these spots, all these seams, are places where if I wore this to work, you know, I'd be getting grease and oil and grime, caliche, breakfast burrito ingredients, all inside of there, and, and that wouldn't be good. So that's the only negative thing I can say about, about the physical design, besides the fact that it's so thick, but Given what it's supposed to do, I can deal with the fact that it's thick. It doesn't get in the way at all while, while working out. And it's so comfortable that I can wear this to bed and use a sleep tracking, no problem. Okay, other, like, I don't think that, that I could use 
Where's the, uh, where's the DWH 5600? I just had it. Look for that. Oh, here it is. I, like, I, I, by the end of the day, I don't want to wear this. It's, it's kind of stifling, kind of fatiguing. Uh, and so, I, like, I wouldn't want to wear this as a sleep tracker. At the end of the day, I want to take this off. The GBDH 2000, I can wear it to bed. So for sleep tracking, it's good. And I did test the sleep tracking. You can watch my video about that. I did that for Prince because Prince was asking about it. I know a few other people were. And uh, kind of gave you a rundown. The problem with the sleep tracking for me is that I'm a truck driver in an oil field, so I do not have a regular bedtime. And for this to work properly, you have to set when the nighttime is. And, uh, and that's when it looks for when you're sleeping. It doesn't automatically detect when you're sleeping. I don't know if other fitness watches, like the Apple watches, will automatically detect when you're sleeping. And it's a shame because it doesn't, it, when, it, when it gives you your sleep status, it doesn't take into account, uh, like here you go to nightly recharge, it says no data, right? Because when I, I was working a night shift uh, uh, last week, and so I had my nighttime set to be during the day, okay? And you can change that in the settings. You see it says nighttime 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. There, I was on a job where we were running shifts, so I was working a night shift. And, and uh, so I'd be sleeping during the day. So I picked up that sleep, but at other, other times, my sleep schedule is very irregular. So I got no value out of the sleep function. However, the watch is comfortable enough that I could wear it to bed. I think that I've made that point very clear. And in terms of the comfort level, most people agreed with me. One gentleman did not. Iron Man GX 1969 said that the GBDH 2000 is very uncomfortable on my wrist, while the GW 9500 is so comfortable and spot on. And I, I didn't know why. He said maybe it's the bones. He didn't give much of an explanation, but he said the, the uh, the Range Man 9400 is uncomfortable, too, and so you know I'll make a I'll make a video hopefully, Lord willing, where we compare the uh, the the Mud Man to the Range Man, and you know see how its wing structure is, a very thick wing structure. And at first I didn't like this, but it kind of grew on me, kind of broke in. So it might it might just have to do with if you have like an average size wrist which I guess would be about six and a half inches, maybe seven. This might work perfectly, but if you're on the tail ends, either big or small, it might need some breaking in. I don't know, because the Range Man does not have those wings. The Range Man is like the mud, uh, the king, where it has a wide gap between where the uh, strap tapers. But anyways, that's a, that's a different subject for a different video. I'm trying to stay focused on on the GBDH 2000 with my update of the review. And like I said, most, most people agreed with me about the, uh, about the comfort of the GBDH 2000 Rich T uh, 1815 said, as a small wrister myself, the GBDH 2000 is one of the most comfortable watch in my collection. Okay. So, the consensus among uh, the commenters is that this is comfortable with only one, one commenter that I can think of right now who, who did not find the GBDH 2000 to be comfortable. Uncle Funker uh, at one point was like, how could you sleep with a three pound watch on your wrist? And the thing is, Uncle Funker, this is not three pounds. It's very light. Uh, it's lighter than the King, okay? Like the King feels heavy. Uh, it's lighter than the P PRW 3500. The PRW 3500 is very top heavy with a bezel, and this is lighter. And I don't have the scale out, but the weight is comparable. The GBA 2000 is a little bit heavier than than the uh, DWH 5600. And this is just me holding them in my hands, kind of bouncing them back and forth, like I'm juggling. I'm not actually juggling, but not heavy. Anyways, have I, have I talked enough about uh, what I like and about the comfort level? 
Probably not, but we'll we'll spill those spill the rest of that over into another video because I want to talk about the gripes. Uh, there was one huge problem I had right off the bat with the GBDH 2000, and I made a video about it. It was a rant video. Okay, I was at the gym working out, and I was saying that it's 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 so stupid. There is no screen on this watch that will tell you the time and your heart rate, okay? So I was doing the gym workout when I, when, you know, I was at the gym. And so, uh, all right, all right, it's picking up my heart rate. I'll just leave it on my fingers. So this, this, these are the screens for the, the gym workout. So, uh, see how it says beats per minute? That's my heart rate, split time. This is when I press the start. So now I'm starting a gym workout. Okay. So beats per minute, split time. That's the time, time of the day and the split time. Your heart rate, nice big screen. No time. There's no time there. There's the time for your workout. And we're back again to the, to the, to the first screen. And so I was saying, this is so stupid. There's no screen that tells you your heart, the heart rate and the time. Like, how could they, this is a watch, you want to tell the time. This is a fitness watch, you want to know your heart rate. Where's the screen that has the time and the heart rate? That's a big oversight. And, and a lot of commenters were like, oh, well, you can change it in the comment or in the uh, app. And I was like, okay, well, I'll take their word for it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not using the app. So it's probably not a good idea for me to, to, to put inaccurate information on on YouTube because a lot of people are, are basing their decision whether or not to purchase this based on you know doing doing YouTube research so I actually made that video unlisted but it, at the time it was getting a lot of views because a lot of people were, were looking to see if it, if there were any like problems and that that to me is a huge problem because let me tell you a little bit about myself okay I'm 43 I weigh 300 pounds. I'm trying to get back in shape, right? At one point, I was I was 18 and I weighed 250 pounds, right? And I actually was a rower on my college's rowing team. I was a novice rower for Boston University, and the coach was like, "Hey, you guys got to get uh, heart rate monitors for steady state workouts, and you need heart rate monitors because the indoor rowing machines called ERGs they can pick up your heart rate monitor, and you have to be in you know the uh, anaerobic zone when you're when you're on the erg when you're when you're doing you know the 2k races so we all got heart rate monitors and they were basic they told you they told you the time they told you your heart rate and if you started a workout it would tell you you know the split time of your of your workout when you're done it would tell you the average heart rate during that workout and the maximum okay so that's what's important and you also want to know what your resting heart rate is like, I don't need the charts. I don't need all of these whiz-bang graphics, and I don't need all these recordings of my workout. I just want to know the time and my heart rate. I just want a basic heart rate monitor. And, and for all the people complaining that the GBDH 2000 doesn't have all these features of a smartwatch, I don't care. But the problem is that the GBDH 2000 does not have a screen that shows you the time and your heart rate. The, the, like, this one does, the DWH 5600, this is the time, it's 12.36 p.m., and this is my heart rate, 133 beats per minute, because I'm getting really worked up about this, all right? And a lot of people were like, oh, you just update the software, you can change the screen on the workout, and, and you can change the home screen that, that will show you the time and, and your heart rate. And so... I finally hooked this up via Bluetooth to the app, and I am sorry to say that this watch still does not tell me the time and the heart rate. It's, it, it fails at being the most basic heart rate monitor you can get. It fails at being uh, like the top of the line whiz bang, every bell and whistle type of heart rate monitor. Honestly, I don't care about that. I don't want that, right? Like people, people like, what kind of an athlete are you that you need like 
top of the line uh, exercise and sleep research. Are you in the Olympics? Are you a professional athlete? I'm not, I'm 43, I'm 300 pounds. I just wanna get back in shape. I just wanna know my, the time and my heart rate. And so, like, the, the, all right, so the other thing that people were saying, let me back out of this, is that, uh, let me discard this workout, even though it was actually a workout yelling like I did, is that there's different watch faces. So you can go into the settings, all right? And uh, is it watch? Yeah, so you go to watch faces. There's watch face one, two, three, four, and five. So watch face number five, I didn't know this until a commenter told me, but the parameters on watch face five, you can change in, in the app. So you grab the app and you go in and it's like, what's, what's on here? You can decide, okay? And so when I was making a video comparing the, G, the DWH 5600 to the GBDH 2000, that was like one big advantage of the DWH 5600 is that you can see your time and the heart rate. And someone said, well, you go with the app, you can, you can adjust that. Well, I went to the app, all right, let me pull it up. I went to the app and, uh, and the, I'm sorry to say it's not exactly the case, all right? So here's the app and the app's clunky. It does crash a lot. It's, it's just about, it's, it's better than most apps that are terrible, but it's not as good as it could be. But the good thing is, for those of you who are interested in, in app connectivity, is that if you have a Strava account or, or an Apple Fitness account, that this, this can uh, interface with it. So you go to my watch, and there's my watch. Okay, and then here are all these different uh, uh, aspects that you can change of the watch, right? So gym workout, inactive, this, here's the different screens. So there's all these different screens, heart rate time, and some others that I have turned off. I mean, I can turn them on just to show you. But they don't have the time and, and the, the heart rate at the same time. And someone said that you can change the watch face. All right, let's go here to watch face. And you can, you have these different watch faces. This is what they actually look like. Watch face one is my favorite. Watch face two is stupid because, see how it has that animation? This animation is like, is like the, like the three eyes, like the Walter or the, D, the DW6900 or the, or the Range Man. Now, those are LCD screens which, which have big chunks, all right? This is an MIP screen, okay, which has a much higher resolution. Why in the world are, are you simulating your old clunky LCD inface, interface? Citizen Watch makes an MIP display uh, watch that you can upload a picture, like a photograph, to have as the backdrop on, on the hybrid watch. Okay? Like, you put this, Casio put this beautiful L, uh, MIP screen, and, and, and they're not even using it at, at, to the highest resolution that they could. Right? This is another side rant. So, all right, I got rants, a lot of rants going on now. They're, they're all open. I have to tie together all these rants uh, before I end this video. But, like, you go down to, let me just do one rant at a time. I'm going to rant about the MIP display. Then we'll get back to that, the rant about the, the watch face. This is the compass, all right? See that little, that, all right, where's north? That tiny little tick points north. Look how big this screen is. Look how big it is. Look how many uh, pixels there are. And then you just have this tiny little tick to see north. So, in, if, if I'm, you know, in, 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 in the bright sun, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to quickly look down at this watch and see where this little tick is. And you have all the space. What are you thinking? Or if I'm on a bicycle, what if I'm on a bicycle and, and I can't move my arm up, my arm's on the handlebars, 
I, I have to keep both hand on the handlebars because I'm not one of those fancy guys who can ride a bike with no handlebars, okay? And, and, how, and I'm supposed to look down and see which way is north based on that tiny little tick. Maybe that's a bad example because like you kind of have to hold it level to see north, but you, you know what I'm saying, right? And, and like even, even the mud man, you go to the, to, to the compass on the mud man, it has a duplex. At least you have a, a, a compass that takes up the whole screen. GBDH2000 has more pixels on its screen than any other G-Shock in history, but its compass has a tiny little tick. Why? You trying to save money on pixels? Would this watch cost $1,000 if you, if you had functions that were actually legible? How long do Casio fans have to put up with poor legibility on G-Shock watches? How long? Anyways, I think I tied up that rant pretty good. Let me get back to the rant about the watch face. So, so these, are, these are the different watch faces. And so watch face four will tell you your steps. And uh, some guys are asking me about the steps. Like I don't, I don't know a whole lot about steps because I'm not much of a step counter. But, but I, I, I will test out the step counter. I, I think that the step counter on the GBDH2000 is fairly accurate based on, based on you know, uh, what, I've been, what I've been doing, okay? But I will actually test it for those of you who are interested. The DWH5600, I don't think that the step counter is accurate, all right? We'll test it out, but like, I remember when I first started wearing this, like I got out of bed and I went and brushed my teeth and then I looked at, at the step counter and, and it was like, uh, it's low battery now. I don't know if it'll show me. But I looked at the step counter and it was like, your steps are 615. And I'm like, wow, I walked like an like a eighth of a mile from the bed to the, to, the, uh, to the bathroom sink. I, don't, I, I was a little incredulous about that. But LifeLog is the widget. Found out that all these are called widgets. They're not called apps or widgets. That it tells you your steps. So I haven't been wearing this, but it says 29 steps. And I have to do some research as to as to how it's it steps, and it and because it might it might take into account basal, uh, basal energy. I think it's called you know your basal heart rate and everything. So it might just estimate your steps based on, you know, just being alive. I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll do more research about the steps because I know that some of you guys are interested, but it, it seems like, like it's fairly accurate, just, just kind of intuitively speaking. But anyways, okay, so let me, let me I'm trying to tie up this end when, when, as it comes to the watch face. Watch face five allows customization. And I was led to believe that I could have the GBDH2000 display the time and the heart rate Okay, in a, in a manner similar to the DWH5600. Okay, see how, see how that's beautiful, big numbers, okay? So I go into this Watch Face 5 customization and it has four slots, okay? One of which is heart rate, okay? So you can edit this and, and it has, on the top half of the screen, there's, there's four segments for uh, what you want displayed. A few of them take, out, take up two segments, such as monthly distance for how much you've run, monthly distance for how much you've walked. But you see right here, like, it, like these other uh, parameters are only one quarter of the top half of the screen, okay? So the number one, that on, on section number one, I want heart rate, which is, what I've, which is what I've chosen. Let me make sure it's still selected. Is it still there? Yes, okay, so it's still there. So save, all right? But the problem is you have to pick all three. I, like I don't really need these other ones. I, I do find sunrise and sunset interesting and the moon phase, I find it interesting. But I would prefer to have 
big old heart rate and that's not that's not possible this is the heart rate see my heart rate is 121 still pretty worked up okay look how tiny that is those of you who wear reading glasses you're working out, you're probably not wearing your reading glasses. Are you able to see the time and your heart rate? No. Now I don't wear reading glasses, I'm actually farsighted. I have really good up close vision, it's kind of crazy. But this is just way too small. It's way too small. Like this, is, this watch is failing at being a basic heart rate monitor, which is all I want it to do. I don't want <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take a water break from all this ranting. And I appreciate you guys listening, watching this far. Like, I think that a lot of you are with me on this subject. And some of you, I know a lot of you are, inter are actually interested in having a top of the line, fully featured fitness watch. But I just think that, practically speaking, like, you know, you have like uncle, like an uncle, like say like Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, every time he goes to fill up his car, he saves the receipt and puts it in the glove box. And you're like, Uncle Mike, why are you doing this? Why is your glove box full of receipts? And he's like, oh, I want to calculate my, my miles per gallon. And you're like, all right, Uncle Mike, what is your miles per gallon? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I, I haven't calculated it. He just has a glove box full of receipts. A lot of the fitness features on these watches end up being a glove box full of receipts. Like, what are you actually doing with all this information? You're hoarding workout information. Okay? So you really have to, have to look at, at what information makes the most amount of impact on your health versus what is an absolute waste of time. Okay? And for some of these features, it's pretty cool to, to at least collect your workouts. So like, if I go to activity log, these are my workouts, okay? And lately I've been doing a bunch of walking workouts. I try to walk like three miles, which is about an hour. And, and so I can get back in shape and then I'll, and I'll transition to running and biking and swimming more, right? Uh, it's a process, I'm 43 and it takes even longer. But it, it is kind of cool to, to keep track of, yeah, I worked out on the 30th. See, where's my pointer pen? I think I might have, all right, don't worry about it. I'll just, use, I'll just use the Zebra X701. I mean, I have multiple pointer pens. But it's like, all right, yeah, I worked out the 30th. I worked out the 31st. I was getting a trend going. We're working out, and then up, a couple weeks went by, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I went to the gym on the, on the 14th and then the 16th. All right, so there was a gap. I think there were, there were more workouts in between, but I, I wasn't wearing that watch. I was wearing the Mudman because, like, it's not like I stop my workout and be like, all right, I ha actually have to go get the GBH 2000. I have to stop because I, I'm starting to work out and I don't have it. I'm not like that. But anyways, it, it is good to see your your progress, and when you go to the app, you can, like, like scroll through and you know on my page you know it, it, it is kind of useful like I don't get a whole ton out of it okay but but it's a good incentive it's it's good for like you know motivation and some maybe some of you are uh, competitive athletes and and you would need to tell me because I don't know you know, what, what's the most important feature out of a fitness watch? Because like I said earlier in the video, in 1999, my rowing coach taught us all about the heart rate monitor. And the most important things are your average heart rate during the workout. And so he was big on steady state workouts. And during like, when you're really pushing it, you want to get your max heart rate as high as it can go. And so, you know, I was 18, 19, freshman in college, and, you know, like the, the highest heart rate that I would see for me, you know, would be like 200 something. I don't know if it ever got to 220. I mean, I'm sure it did, but I never saw it get to 220. My buddy Javier, he pumped it up to 220 once on the ERG. It was pretty cool. But, you know, so the max heart rate 
your average heart rate during the workout and your resting heart rate are the most important things that, that I remember there for being, uh, for, for fitness, right? And so if you have, if you, if you have something else that, that you want to know if this does, you know, you can ask in the comments, I'll see if it's there because I'm kind of out of the loop as to what's the most important in terms of a heart rate monitor. I hope I made myself clear. But anyways, those are my gripes. And, and so the software really detracts from the beauty, the physical beauty of this watch. And there's another big problem. And that is that like, uh, like when, it, when you get your phone, right? I, I have my time set to Texas time, right? And uh, all the time. And sometimes for work, we have to go to New Mexico, which is mountain time. I don't want my, my, my time to change time when I cross time zones. Because we go back and forth. And a lot of times in the oil field, you don't know whether you're in Texas or New Mexico. Uh, you know, out near Orla and Carlsbad and that area. It's not like there's, there's a sign like in, in the middle of ranches that say, hey, now you're in Texas. And a lot of times your phone can ping a, a, a tower uh, like on the other, other side of the border. And when you go to South Texas, sometimes you ping uh, cell towers in Mexico and your phone says, Benevite a Mexico, right? So I always want my time devices to be on Texas time, right? The problem with this watch is that uh, when you go into settings, right? And you go down to watch settings, okay? Home time. You set it to, uh, here I'm going to set it to uh, central time, which is Chicago, right? Check mark, it's set. Now, remember how I was telling you that the time sinks based on the GPS. Now, the way that GPS works is that the GPS satellites just send out atomic time, right? And a, and, and a device, like this is a GPS device. This is my Yesu. Uh, uh, it's amateur radio. See how it says GPS? This has built an APRS. So for APRS, which is a, which is a type of uh, radio broadcast, it has, to, it has to calculate the GPS. And so it takes, it takes stock of a, of a number of, uh, of satellites. It takes stock of a number of different satellites to, to calculate your GPS coordinates, okay? And uh, this watch, if it wanted to sync the time, it wouldn't need to get a whole bunch of GPS coordinates and then calculate your, uh, or a whole bunch of GPS satellite signals and then calculate your, your coordinates to tell the time. It could just grab a few and then average the time, right? Because the difference is, is very small. And there are GPS watches that do that, and Casio does make some that are like that. So it's very similar to multi, multi-band six. That could be Casio's solution for, for Brazil and for India, is to just have basic GPS watches. Watches that don't calculate your GPS coordinates, watches that just use a GPS signal to calculate the time. Because it takes a lot of energy to pull in a bunch of different GPS satellites and it takes a lot of energy to calculate your coordinates. It doesn't take as much to just display the time. But anyways, if you go and do, a, if you, like I want my watch to be set for Texas. If you go and do a workout that requires GPS, like uh, trail running, let's take trail running. It says, please wait. I don't know, I don't know if this demonstration is gonna work. It's starting up the GPS, we'll see if it takes it in. So what happens is that it's going to update your time. It will also update your time zone. So if I wear this watch in New Mexico and I have a little bit of downtime, like, all right, well, I'm going to go for a jog. And I start this up to go for a jog. It will calculate that I'm in New Mexico and it will change the time on the watch to be for New Mexico, which is a huge problem, like, because because when I, when I look down at the time, I want to know that that time is Texas time. I don't want ever have to guess uh, if, my, if my watch changed its time. The same thing with my phone. I, I have the phone set to be on central time. 
I don't care where I am in the world, the phone is on central time, I will do the calculation to calculate local time. And this is important for truck drivers too. When you think about it, there's four time zones in the continental United States, right? And some of them observe daylight savings. Some states do, some states don't, right? What is it, Arizona or Nevada that they don't observe it? But anyways, uh, to eliminate confusion, you ha as a trucker, you have, to, you have to reckon all your time by your home terminal time. Anyways, let me show you what happened. So I'm going to back out of that workout. So the, the uh, GPS has synced. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I did it long enough, but let's see. So I'm going to go back into settings. I'm going to go to watch settings. And remember what it said before. It said my home time was Chicago. Well, now it says my home time is universal time code minus six. Right? So it changed it. It just so happened that it changed it to the same time zone, but it has a different way of reckoning it. When, when you go into these settings for the time zone, it should, whatever you set, it, the watch should never change that. Okay? And so if you did want the watch to automatically change your time zone, there should be a, there should be a selection here that would say auto, as in automatically change the time. But it doesn't. Okay? That's a serious problem. Now, I have not observed whether, whether using the, the phone, whether it, it changes it back uh, to, to the correct time or whether the watch will, will prioritize the phone time over the GPS time. I have not experimented with that. I realize now making this video that I probably should have. There was one commenter on, on my review of this video, uh, this watch. He was like, are you even prepared? Did you even prepare for, for the review? Uh, and I was like, no, I didn't. I never do. What are you, crazy? Preparation? <sighs> okay. Uh, uh, what else do I have to say about this watch? Well, the updated review, uh, the, I, would, I would say that the, the hooking it up to the phone... With a, blue, with a Bluetooth, for me, has not added a lot of benefit, okay, uh, for me personally. Now, for you, I understand that you may not be as dead set against Bluetooth as me. And I've softened up on Bluetooth on this watch, like I said, because I have other standalone options for watches, watches that don't have Bluetooth at all, okay? And, and uh, so... That's why I have Bluetooth on this. I have it turned on. Uh, so, like, it, it's 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 as far as the stars go. I uh, I you know I, I'm probably gonna go four four point four, which is four stars and then two two points of the fifth star. Okay, and I'm gonna round up to five. Just, just to like make a statement about how much I like this watch, even though I have some serious problems. It's their software problems. It's just, it's amazing. Like when you think about like, like a classic square. Like my my son Phil, he has a classic square, but but it looks like this. This is just a regular Casio. But when you think about about what they did with a classic square, it's just an LCD. It has a, a few eight segment displays, and inside is a bunch of. Uh, transistors pretty much i mean there's integrated circuits but the casio engineers had to sit there and make a whole whole huge logic uh gate a whole bunch of logic gates to have the buttons actually do something on these old-fashioned watches they didn't have like computer programming languages right and then when you get to watches like this or this they, they can program these watches with actual programming language. As far as I know, th these don't have, th these aren't, don't all operate on transistors, right? There's some spots where you can load up essentially software. And this doesn't have a, as robust of an operating system as your Garmin watch or, or your Apple watch, which are essentially mini computers, but th there's still way more that you could do with software and with the screen, which has a higher resolution. But somehow, these older watches are better, okay? 
Because the other problem, and I forgot, I was like, there's something else I want to rant about, is that even after updating the software, right, the, uh, when you go down here to, to the timer, the timer maxes out at 60 minutes. Whereas these other watches, which are supposedly cruder and more old fashioned, you can set the timer for up to 24 hours. Okay. And, and I, and, and I, and the same, the stopwatch too is like, there's problems with the stopwatch. Updating the software hasn't fixed those problems. How is it that like these, it's supposed to be advanced, but it's a step backwards. It's kind of like you ever look at old Disney movies, like say Snow White, and it's like the most beautiful piece of art that you've ever seen. And they hand painted that. They hand painted Snow White and it's amazing. And then you go and you watch like some new Disney movie where they have computers, right? And somehow they're just like blobs. It's just like blobs with, with hard outlines. There's no gradients. There's like no detail with better tools. You have a worse product. The newer Disney movies are absolute junk compared to the hand painted movies of the past. Similar thing with, with these watches, these, these, these millennial watch programmers sitting down at a computer to program a watch can't make this watch functionally as good as just like some regular old watch of the past. I'll just use this one because this one's really popular. AE 1500. People love this watch. I don't blame them. Really the only problem with this watch in terms of basic watch functionality is that when you go to the timer or the stopwatch, it doesn't show you what time it is while the stopwatch is running. But while the stopwatch is running, you can go back to the time. So one grievance, another grievance I have with the GBDH 2000 is that when you start the stopwatch, And so here's a stopwatch. Let's get it going. All right. Let me back out of it. Well, you hit back, right? Well, if you press back once, it just, it just splits the time. And if you didn't want to do that, well, too bad. You just did. And you're like, all right, well, I don't want to split the time, but I want to go back. So let me long press back. Okay. Go ahead. Try up. Oh, you added another split. Hopefully, hopefully that isn't a big problem. You can't back out of the stopwatch without adding, without splitting the time. So stopwatch is still going. You go to the stopwatch and see it's going at it splits. You didn't want it to, but here's another thing. All right. The time's at the bottom, which is good. Wouldn't it be good to have a heart rate here? Why not just throw in the heart rate somewhere? Why not just have the heart rate and time on every single screen of this, of this watch? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just got to take a breath. I got to relax now. That was a serious workout. I'm still going to go to the gym this evening, but <clears throat> I may need to take another dose of pre-workout, you know, before I go to the gym again, because that those rants just depleted a lot of energy. I should be wearing the watch. I could tell you how many calories I burnt while ranting. So it's just, so if you want to know how much calories you've burnt and everything, you go to life log and it measures your steps and, uh, your, you know, it has goals for you and everything. All right. So, uh, I, I have a video that like the, my first review video, a lot of the stuff I said, and it still stands updating the software has not resolved the grievances that I have with the GBDH 2000. Will they be able to update those grievances? I don't know, because I think that all these newfangled watches that they're making have limitations on the, on the, on the timer and the stopwatch. And a lot of people, again, were like, oh, you can, you know, change, change the, the, uh, the, the alarms and everything in the watch and the app. It's so much easier than the watch. No, it's not. Cause you have to go from like, get your phone, go over to the app. Turn on the app. It always crashes. Turn the app back on again. You have to look at that little circle as it syncs with your phone. And then you have to scroll down to find the alarms. Well, there they are. Okay. Now see it's doing the circle. 
all right take your time go ahead it's not like i have more important stuff to do and then you have to change your alarms right using using this thing and then when if you change it let's just change one what time is it now 107 let's make one me at 108 p.m if i can set it in time Oh, I have to change it to 1308 before it turns into 1308. Or do I? Where'd 13 go? It does. All right. How do you change it to be PM? I don't know. Something's wrong. Oh. All right. It's it's because my fingers are so callous that a lot of time these screens don't even pick it up. I'm not even joking. So save. Send it to the watch. Spinning circles. It's complete. All right. Is it? All right. All right. So this is perfect. There we go. And another good thing about this watch is it has a vibration alarm. So I have the alarm set to be audible and vibrating. All right. And in general, these these alarms won't don't wake me up. However. There is, there is, you do have the ability to set a smart alarm that will sense when you're coming out of sleep. Right here, smart alarm, all right? And so uh, the alarm will go off shortly before your scheduled waking time when your sleep is at its lightest. That would probably wake you up if you had the, the uh, vibration. I would not rely on the audible alarm to wake you up. Uh, so, uh, but if you turn it on snooze, if you have this alarm to be set for snooze, which on all the Casios will just keep on going off until you go back into alarms and turn it off. Snooze has woken me up. Like the, like it just keeps on vibrating and beeping. But again, I wouldn't rely on it. So another problem with this watch, I just thought of it, that has not been resolved with the uh, software update is the fact that the alarms are not, is not a widget on the screen. If you want to set the alarms with a watch, you have to hold this down and go to settings. And then, uh, let's see where it is. It's somewhere in here. There it is. You have to go to watch settings, alarm. You have to like, you have to dive through the screen to set, to set the alarms. And so if you had the snooze function on to turn the snooze off, you'd have to do that. But honestly, it's easier to just keep on canceling the snooze, you know, after you get up or whatever. But anyways, I guess my point is that it's not so convenient and easy to set the alarms via the via the the phone app. You do have to like kind of dive through menus. It, like it's not it's not like oh it's so much easier than setting it in the phone in the watch. Setting in the watch isn't that bad, but you, it is it is annoying that they don't have it in the main uh, widgets. So the widgets, they like see along the perimeter, there's a notches, and one notch is a little bit bigger than the others. So you can scroll through through these. And and some other problems that still exist is that when you change parameters for for various functions, you can't just hold down the button to change the the parameters so let me find the timer so if you want to set the timer hold down reverse and i want to set that okay well you have to keep on pressing each for for each integer you can't change the digit like you can't change the tens and then change the ones you have to change each digit and you can't hold down the button even if you long press it, it won't, it won't change it quickly. Like a long press is just one. See, long press, you let go, one. That's stupid, that's annoying. But that's probably not software, that's probably has to do with the nature of the button. But it's really ironic, again, I guess ironic's not the right word. It's really tragic that, uh, say if I did want to set the timer on the AE1500, all right, well, hold down adjust. Now it's blinking. All right, let me hold down this. And it's speeding through the numbers. So even though you can't change 
the digits, like the tens and then the, then the ones, you're only changing the integers. At least you can long press this on this old fashioned LCD transistor based watch, right? Alanis Morissette would call that ironic. I knowing what ironic actually means, call it tragic. It's a tragedy. It really is a tragedy. Just in general, not just with watches, but in life, how we have all these amazing computers that are supposed to expand our abilities. And instead, things were more beautiful, things were better thought out, things functioned better when you had just, you know, regular men with crude tools like brushes and chisels and hammers. And no, no computers, just pen and paper if they were going to write. That's really amazing. And I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll end my review, updated review with that thought uh, and just kind of hype up some other things that I have going on. We still have the Leatherman to review, which this is the, fr the uh, arc, okay? And uh, what else? So we got some, some flashlights. You guys know I'm a fan of Nebo. Not the best quality, but Pretty good value and good customer service at the Nebo Corporation, which I think is located in Texas. Then we have some reading material for story time, right? You think Donald's gonna like reading the Casio book with me? I think so. So it's in the, in the saran wrap, cellophane, whatever it's called. We'll bust it out of here and the kids get back and, and we'll start reading this book. I think it'll be great bedtime material and uh, yeah, I will be reviewing the uh, Yesu. Uh, and so, there we go, gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was my the update to the review of the GBDH2000. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. And stay tuned for more reviews, more rants, more goof videos, and uh, dad vlogs. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.